Back on October the 26th, 2021, Sam Yang gave us the AF 12 mil for Fujifilm that some of us have been enjoying since. And now 16 months down the line, we've got a new one, the AF 75 mil 1.8 from Sam Yang that we're obviously testing right now, as you can read on the T4 at f 1.8 how is she faring next we're going to look at it up close there's a few little features that i think might appeal to you that i'm particularly enjoying then yeah the usual random samples my waffle how i feel about it then more importantly it'll be over to you in the comments below so yeah let's just crack on well packaged looks like i don't get the guarantee in the booklet or the nice case that we got with the 12 mil but hey we've got the lens now this is either a pre-production copy or a very early run it's all plastic feels good to be fair let's line this up and get this on <laughs> it's always slow when i do it on these videos but yeah wow it is like now i have weighed it 233 grams it does have weather sealing which is a big pro can't get that on now and 62 mil filter thread 69 centimeters close focusing magnification ratio 0.13 times i believe now there are nine diaphragm blades 10 elements in nine groups focal length in Full fat terms, 112.5 mil with an angle of view of 21.9 degrees. Now, you'd have noticed no aperture ring. The aperture does go 1.8 to f22 plus program mode. Now, you do have this nice, well-textured manual focus ring. But if you flick this switch here, well, it's already flicked down. <laughs> but M1 is manual focusing. And M2, when it's all up and running properly, as I'm only getting this feature on movie mode on my T4 at the moment. As I say, this is either pre-production or very, very, very pre-release runs, or pre-production, let's just call it. So what we're waffling about is this becomes an aperture control ring. And also with future firmware updates, they say other functions will come to this custom switch that is very good that is a big pro to this when it works because obviously i'm not getting full experience yet you will by the time this is out Yes, it's light, not made for an absolute thrashing, but it should last some time being used in and out of my travel bag in different weather conditions. Now, I really like the build and the handling, and even though it's basically plastic, I think the size and the weight, you know, it's a nice match for the T-Series bodies, the S10, for example, maybe the E range. Now, one thing to note is that the lens barrel and... The filter size is a direct match for the 12 mil so that's a tick in the pro column for filter users and potentially gimbal shooters As you can see, the face detection is 
basically working. Remember pre-production. Let's flick across. I think for me that is perfectly fine. Absolutely no problem. And this is the XT4, so you know let's turn face detection off. Oh, I to the records. I to the records. Oh, that was user error. So in a situation like this, you might want to make the point a bit smaller, give you a bit more of a chance. But I don't think we can complain too much about the order focus on this, although the way the internet is, people probably will. Sharpness in the center, wide open is more than good enough. And actually edge to edge, it performs quite well too. Contrast, very good. Color rendering, excellent, consistent. I'm very pleased with that. Now field curvature can be a bit of an issue wide open but distortion itself isn't a problem there's maybe a touch of pin cushion you know as to be expected and yeah chromatic aberration moderate but fixable so not bad i found the lens very much at home shooting people but also cityscapes day-to-day -day travel type stuff like this quick rip around the canals near home Vignetting is almost non-existent, at least in my test, but the lens does struggle a little with flaring. Now finally, bokeh. It's possibly not the best out there for that, but it's more than adequate. LED lighting, for example, is fine, but it can get a bit messy with foliage and water, as you might notice in some of these final test shots around Edgebaston Reservoir in Birmingham. The lens launched at £395 plus VAT, so £474 RRP, which is not too bad, all things considered. It is a shame that there's that Fujifilm tax over the Sony version, but, you know, considering the way of the world, it could be worse. Of course, the nearest competitor, let's say, is the excellent Viltrox 75mm. The Samyang will be cheaper and easier indeed to get your hands on in a local store, depending on where you live. It's almost three times lighter, smaller, focuses 17 centimeters closer, takes a smaller filter size and has that interesting custom switch. Yes, the Viltrox lets in a bit more light and is a fantastic lens with a proper aperture ring and it's got a lot going for it. But you know, if you're into your compact gear, then the Samyang is probably the one for you. Personally, I'm stuck, as I was with the Samyang 12mm and the Viltrox 13, two quality lenses that are just too close for me to need both, but I still haven't gotten rid of either. <laughs> and it's the same with these two 75mm lenses that I now own. They're probably going to stay for some time. The Samyang pair, in fact, will be a nice little travel combo for me and the Viltrox pair in the work kit bag. Now, awkwardly, you do need to budget in around 55 to 61 pounds for the firmware lens station if you want to make the most of these Samyang lenses. But at least Samyang plan to add more features to this custom switch going forwards. 
I hope we don't have to wait another 16 months for their next release. So what do you want to see from them? Maybe the 135mm f1.8, something like that. You know, a longer prime that goes well with the 12 and the 75. I mean, typically, it's probably going to be something in the middle. But, you know, we Fujifilm shooters, we want tele prime. So, Sam Yang, get it done. Right, over to you. Have you tried this yet? What do you think? Let us know in the comments. And until then, take it easy.